What is going on guys? This is Yix here of Magna Crypto and welcome back to another video. So today's video is about stable coins. Uh, I want to talk about what they are, why they're produced, different types of stable coins that there are, and also what is the outlook of them going forward? What's the future looking like with stable coins in them? Um, because it's looking very interesting in my opinion. So I wanted to do a nice video on the topic. So first and foremost, what are stable coins? They are crypto assets that maintain a stable value relative to a stable asset or basket of assets. Stable coins can be pegged to assets like precious metals, fiat currency, or an assortment of all of them or some of them. Um, and the stable coins that are redeemable in those assets or currencies are called asset backed. Because obviously they're, they're backed by those assets. Uh, however, there are also those that are, are autonomously controlled by algorithms. And these are called seniorage style coins. Uh, and they are obviously more, or not obviously, but they're more decentralized uh, as opposed to the asset backed stable coins so stable coins are designed for any application which requires a low threshold of volatility so why were they created so stable coins were cr created mainly to cancel out the volatility of cryptocurrencies because they were swinging up and down so much uh, there was a need for something that was stable amongst the volatile the wild rest of the crypto market but they also need to be to benefit from the ease of transferring uh, as cryptocurrencies are. You could send the crypto to anyone in the world as long as they have an internet connection. So you you know you they still want to have the benefit of that while having a stable uh, price. Uh, and also, you know, stable coins act as a temporary safe haven from volatility. So you might want to purchase a crypto for its gain in value, but after a certain while, you might want to transfer it and park it in something that isn't volatile and stable, so it maintains the value over time. And at some other point, you might want to jump back into the market for, for some more gains. So, you know, it can be used as a safe haven from, from that volatility. So there are a couple of different types of um, stable coins. I'm just going to quickly outline Kind of the advantages and disadvantages of, of them. So we've got one, we've got fiat backed stable coins. So most popularly uh, is uh, USDT. Um, but the advantages of the fiat backed stable coins is that they're backed by something that's inherently less volatile compared to cryptocurrencies. Um, and kind of put in your Crypto converting it to, to a fiat backed stable coin is essentially like taking your money out of the stock market and putting it in cash as it's obviously a lot less volatile. Um, another advantage is it can be redeemed into its, the underlying asset. So you can redeem it back into, let's say, dollars with USDT and essentially spend it because at the moment you can't use you know, stable coins to, to buy many things. So to, to be able to redeem it back into to fiat currency is obviously very useful because you can use it. Also, it's unlikely to drop in value due to arbitraging methods. So if, uh, I don't know, due to inflation, maybe the value of the, the reserve currency or the back currency loses value, then you know whoever has issued the stable coin can simply top up the reserve. Uh, and you know, that's kind of arbitraging it. But the disadvantage of using a fiat backed stablecoin is that you know the backed stablecoin is also subject to the same volatility and risk of the backed asset meaning if we're talking about a usdt or us stablecoin which is backed by a dollar you know the same volatility volatility that the us dollar is subject to will also affect the stablecoin so for example inflation will affect it, it will lose value because of that. Also, whatever vault it's kept in, if it's a robbed, for example, you know, that will cause issues, massive issues. 
Also, it's subject to loss of confidence. So if something happens to the issuer, then people will lose confidence in the stable coin. So also, you know, it, it relies heavily on good faith. Um, and it's very possible and probably likely to be honest that the issuer who's issuing the stable coin can potentially, you know, state that they've got reserve of the backed stablecoin, like in the reserve of the asset backed, let's say $100 million, it could say it's got that and then issue $100 million in the stablecoin, but really and truly only have 50% of that reserve in a vault somewhere. And it could be investing the other half for obviously profit, thus lying to everyone. And also it, this could, really cause a massive uh, issue uh, which happens in the economy all the time you know most banks don't actually have all the money that they say they do in the banks it's called fractional it's uh, i can't remember the name of it but you know if you put let's say one dollar into the bank account it can then lend out just by, by clicking a few buttons it can lend out nine or ten dollars nine percent of, of that value uh, which is essentially fake money and that's potentially what could be happening uh, with uh, these uh, issuers lying and you know not having the complete reserve so this has actually happened already with the most popular stablecoin usdt now i'll show you so you can see teva's long history of scandals this is the most popular stablecoin it's constantly beset with numerous scandals, whether it's failing audits or not even having an audit. Uh, it, Wells Fargo suspend, suspended its services for Bitfinex and Tether, causing a temporary freeze of wire transfers. A third party audit firm has never conducted a full audit on Tether. So basically, they, no one's been able to confirm whether they've got the full reserve that they say they do. They could even have zero, you know, in their vault and print 100, 100 million, you know, stable coins or USDT, tether coins. I've put this in the link in the description, but there's, you know, there's loads of scandals that have happened with, with this stable coin. And this can be the case with every fiat or asset backed stable coin. So that's a huge, huge disadvantage. Um, however, it's still very convenient and that's why people still use it even though there's a, a massive issue with trust. Um, another type of stablecoin is commodity backed. So it could be backed by something like silver or gold or other precious metals. There is one company that was launched, I think in 2016, uh, as you can see, one DGX equals one gram of gold. And they're able to confirm this with a protocol that they have. So you can see 100% transparent. This is the key, the confidence is obviously there um, and each bar can be looked at by anyone, anywhere and anytime. This, I'm going to get into this into, into when I wrap up the video, but this is part, this is the key part when it comes to confidence and trust. So this is, an, this is a commodity backed stablecoin. So obviously it's much more stable because, you know, the gold back in it or whatever commodity back in it cannot be print, printed to Kingdom Kong like fiat currencies. So there's a lot more value and weight behind these tokens. Personally, I would put my money in this rather than uh, fiat backed stable coins to park it there essentially. Also, we have crypto backed stable coins. So no surprise there, it's backed by cryptocurrency or a crypto portfolio, like a basket of cryptos. And the supply is regulated on chain via smart contracts. So this is a decentralized solution, a very key part. Uh, an example of this could be making DAO. So when I say this, the, the supply is managed, regulated using smart contracts, let's say the value of the actual crypto reduces um, because of some volatility, you know, the smart contract would activate and increase supply of the collateral that they have. So it could increase the supply of crypto that they have in the reserves to make sure that the price remains stable. Um, however, this 
is vulnerable to bugs in smart contracts. So obviously this is code that we're dealing with and it's still very early days. So uh, there've already been a couple of issues. For example, MakerDAO, as I mentioned, was hacked. And I don't wanna get into the actual nitty gritty of the, the actual hack. So I'm not gonna lie to you, even that confuses me, but essentially there were, there were inherent bugs in the code. And due, this is another issue, due to the extreme volatility in the crypto market, it allowed some people to take advantage of that and liquidate about 8 million in Ethereum tokens. So this is the big disadvantage with crypto backed, but the advantage is the decentralized nature. It's less hands-on, which is what we want in this day and age, all the manipulation that's going on in the world. We want less manipulation. And because it's so volatile, again, cryptocurrencies, it needs a very highly collateralized basket of cryptos, basically, uh, to be able to keep, keep that stablecoin um, stable. You know, you need a lot of the actual asset to make sure that it doesn't dip too low, for example. Another one is called CBDCs, which is central, central backed digital currency. And essentially this is just a stable coin or a digital currency issued and controlled directly by central bank. So essentially fiat currency dig digitized. Um, and we've already got, you know, countries like China who are absolutely steamrolling ahead. They are loving this um, digital currency. As you can see, China's digital currency takes shape as trials begin with travel, travel subsidies and com communist party fees. The issue with this, from the point of view of the user, is that whoever's issuing them obviously has complete control and is able to track and trace the use of this coin 100%. You know, essentially, you know, if this really takes off, which probably will, whoever's issuing it, aka the state, has complete control over how you use it. So if this is connected to your person, as in if it's connected to your identity, let's say if you committed a small crime, they could essentially stop you using this um, CBDC, which would stop you basically spending any money. Basically, CBDCs really adds a massive layer of control over whoever, whoever's using it. They'll be able to trace and track everything that you're doing with this. So there's absolutely no privacy once this really takes off. However, the benefits of it is obviously a lot more convenient, very easy to use. We are essentially using it, or it feels like we're using it right now when we're using contactless cards, uh, things, things like that when you use your phone to, to do contactless. Uh, so there's not gonna be that much of a difference from that point of view. From the back end, it's gonna make a big difference for central banks. And also, for example, let's say all the stimulus packages that they're sending out now to the, in the US, for example, if they had CBDCs, they could probably do that, you know, much more quicker. They'd, they'd be able to create those tokens and send it to individual accounts much quicker. You know, it'll be using the benefits of cryptocurrencies or the blockchain um, without it actually being decentralized, so to speak. And the last example of or the last type of stablecoin is seniorage style. And this is where algorithms control the money supply of the stablecoin. And it's similar to central banks creating and destroying currency. Um, however, it's controlled by algorithms. And the adjustments are made on chain. Uh, and there's no need for any collateral because it's completely controlled by an algorithm. So essentially, you know, to stabilize the price, let's say, you know, the demand increased a lot, which increased the price, you know, and the algorithm would obviously pick this up and would potentially increase the supply and create more tokens to stabilize it and maintain the price. So this, I think it really has promise because it's completely decentralized. As long as the code is actually open sourced and we all have complete visibility as to, you know, what the code is actually doing, then I think this has real value because trust these days is really low. So, you know, the more transparency there is, the more likely people will want to use them. So what's the future looking like for, for these stable coins? I think they're definitely gonna pick up, 
in usage because you can already see all these nations are picking up china are, are steamrolling ahead trialing it and, and looking to push it out from a government central bank point of view they are absolutely loving this because they essentially have complete control over the currency supply and you know what people are doing with it so that's why china's loving it and every other nation is looking to really um, make it and and roll it out as soon as possible um so so they love it. it it gives them complete control from our point of view cbdc's or central backed digital currencies are not good and um, because you know they want to you know move to a cashless society where basically you have absolutely no privacy anymore you know and obviously you should not be engaging in any illegal activities but we all deserve privacy you know we can't you, we can't have 24 7 eyes on exactly how we're spending our money that's just that's just not fair and it also gives them too much control and influence in how we spend our money because they'll collect so much data they'll be able to affect too much of what we're doing and he'll have too too much control in in china already they've got so much control where if you commit any crimes or even little crimes they can essentially cut off your money supply and it will stop you spending money so you basically have to do what they want and using cbdc's they'll have that extra added control to really cut you off if you don't do what the state wants but unfortunately i do see this um being adopted because central banks are adopting it so we have no choice but to kind of get involved in this or have to use it but i think commodity backed and also seniorage style coins will really pick up as well because of that decentralized factor people really don't trust the state or banks at the moment so they're going to want to use something that's not controlled by them uh, and also companies that are using commodity backed or um, or other asset backed stable coins who have set a lot of transparency and who have a lot of trust will also have their, their stable coins being adopted as well so you know if people have a lot of confidence in them they'll be more likely to use them um, and there's you know there's a lot of benefit to using stable coins because they're so you know they, they take they they derive their benefits from cryptocurrency so you can essentially transact with them in a much more seamless manner um everything is digitized so you know the, the, there's a lot less friction in the financial system so what's the future going to look like i think it's, it's going to be a confidence game companies will essentially be competing for the usage alongside central banks alongside cbdc's and decentralized stablecoins so there's going to be a, a battle between who gets the most market share essentially and it will depend mostly on the level of trust firstly in the state which is very low but people will have confidence in the state they're just been they've been so used to it so it will depend on that whether the level of trust is going to be maintained over time you know throughout this the the outbreak of the virus people are not happy with the government and kind of how slow they've been to reacting to the outbreak so this could really dent the confidence in the state um, and there's obviously the decentralized option uh, which technically would be the most trustworthy but there is a massive lack of knowledge and awareness from people and it's quite complicated to, to understand and people tend to not use things that are too complicated so there's a lot of different factors that are, that are gonna dictate which stablecoin gets used the most but i think it is going to be a battle between all of them it's going to be a very interesting battle to to see but it's definitely going to happen and stablecoins are the future so I'm, I'm excited to see what happens i'm hoping cbdc's take the least amount of market share because i really do not want that amount of uh visibility on what i'm doing you know not that i do anything illegal but I just you know you don't want people watching you 24 7 it's just not you know what i want so that will be all for today i hope you got some value from that and your understanding of stable coins and how how 
the, the outlook of them in the future is going to be like. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and like this video. And I hope you're safe during this manic time and, you know, practicing social distance. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.